Hello, this is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church. Welcome to our video service for Sunday, January 24th. My sermon for this morning is God So Loved from John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. God So Loved. And I have two songs to sing with you this morning. Who You Say I Am by Ben Fielding and Reuben Morgan, Who You Say I Am, and Just As I Am by Charlotte Elliott. But first, Who You Say I Am.
fought against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am who you say I am. Who oh, the sun sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. I welcome you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel of John. John chapter 3, and uh, I will speak from the whole of uh, verses uh, 16 to 21, but to begin, we'll read uh, just uh, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Father God, we thank you for these words of scripture, and we thank you for these words from uh, our Savior and your Son, Christ Jesus. And Father, I pray that as we recall these words, I uh, pray that you will speak to us about the salvation you freely offer us through Christ Jesus. And uh, that by simply believing in Jesus, we can receive the eternal life that Jesus speaks about in these uh, words. And so I pray in his name. Amen. John 3.16 is likely the most popular and well-known verse of the Bible. The scripture reference even has its own page on Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia. Because of its clear and compelling declaration of the gospel, John chapter 3 verse 16 has long been the verse to quote for Christian witness. And the reference has become so familiar that the simple digits of the chapter and verse readily recall the famous words. 316 has even become a part of North American culture. Football fans will display it on jerseys and placards. Chris, uh, Christian business, business owners will print the scripture reference on their packaging. And some hardy fellows will declare their faith with a 316 tattoo. Popular country music singer Keith Urban released a song in 2015 that includes John 316 in the title. It reached the number one spot on the Canadian country billboard. I learned everything I needed to know from John Cougar, John Deere, and John 3.16, Urban Sings. <laughs> so I welcome you to return with me to John 3.16 and the following verses, 
to learn what Christ Jesus has to say about himself and the heavenly gift of eternal life. For God so loved the world, the rabbi or teacher Jesus says first in verse 16. He is talking with the religiously minded Pharisee and Jewish ruling council member Nicodemus about being born again spiritually and entering the everlasting kingdom of God. For God so loved the world are remarkable words for a rabbi to speak, since among the Jews there is plenty of talk and understanding about the love of God for Israel, but little about his affection for the nations, the whole world, or all humankind. And how do we know that God dearly loves the world? How has he shown favor and kindness for humanity? that he gave his one and only Son. And this only Son is the heavenly and immortal one we read about in chapter 1. He is the ever-living Word of God become human flesh and the man, Christ Jesus. That whoever believes in him, verse 16 says further, and it means whoever believe that, believes that Jesus is indeed the one and only heavenly Son of God and Savior of the world, shall not perish but have eternal life. Those who believe in the Son Jesus will not perish in the final judgment of the immortal souls of every man and woman who has lived but will instead receive the glorious life of the resurrection of the righteous dead and the blessed age of the kingdom of God to come, which the Old Testament scriptures and prophets have foretold. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, Jesus says next about himself in verse 17, but to save the world through him. The purpose of God for sending his heavenly son Jesus into the world has been a loving and kind one. It has been to save the whole world or humankind through the son, who will be lifted up upon a cross to suffer and die, as Jesus has spoken about in verse 14 above. But even with this good and gracious purpose for the sending of the Savior into the world, condemnation or judgment has come, because it is the necessary and natural consequence of refusing the Son. Whoever believes in him, verse 18 says further, is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Savior is not condemned, but receives the gracious gift of eternal life. But whoever does not believe and refuses the loving kindness God offers through the Son, that unbeliever stands condemned already, even before the last judgment and the final reckoning of all souls. This is the verdict, or this is the judgment, verse 19 declares. Light has come into the world. Like a light shining in the darkness of the night, the Son Christ Jesus has shone or revealed himself to the sinful world of humanity. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. 
Men and women, too, have loved the darkness of their unbelief and rejection of the light Christ Jesus. They have not simply missed the light or misunderstood the revelation. Rather, they have loved or reveled in their doubt and denial. And this is because their deeds have been wrongful. Men and women have hated to give up their wrongdoings and abandon them. They have refused to come into the light and believe the heavenly revelation that has come through Christ Jesus. Everyone who does evil hates the light, verse 20 adds. And it speaks about the one who practices wrongdoing. He hates or scorns the light and the revelation of Christ Jesus. And this wrongdoer will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Because the revelation of truth and righteousness in Christ Jesus will surely shine upon the deeds of the wrongdoer and will expose them for the wretched acts they are. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, verse 21 reads. More literally, he who does or practices the truth readily comes toward the light, and especially toward the light of revelation and truth in Christ Jesus. Toward him and his light, the truth-doing soul will come in faith, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The coming of the truth-minded man and woman to faith in Christ reveals that the gospel is true and the work of God himself. Truth, light, love, salvation, and life. These have all come into the world and to humankind through the heavenly man, Christ Jesus. But what will you and I do with him? Will we welcome him and believe in him? Or will we refuse him? And reject him. For God so loved the world, amazingly, wonderfully, the immortal God and almighty maker of the universe has loved and shown kindness to the world of men and women. And this gracious favor has occurred in time and history and still has meaning for your life and mine, that he gave his one and only Son. God has freely given his only heavenly and immortal Son, the one who has been with the Almighty since eternity, and who has been the Word that has formed the universe. That only Son has become the man Christ Jesus. And amazingly and wonderfully also, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life, immortality, imperishable like the Son himself. And how may we receive such a priceless gift? By believing in the Son, Christ Jesus. By believing in him and receiving the grace, godliness, and life that come from the immortal and heavenly Son of God. Amazing. But amazing also is that the world and many men and women do not welcome the Savior Jesus and refuse the gift of eternal salvation 
that he has come to bring us. To be clear, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The Heavenly Father has never meant to condemn human souls for denying his Son and refusing the gift of eternal life. Rather, the Father has lovingly sent the Son into the world to save men and women. But despite the greatness of the gift and the gracious purpose of the giver, what have some souls done? They have refused the Savior and have sadly brought condemnation on themselves. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. The Son of God himself has warned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. The name of God's one and only Son is Jesus. And sadly, many men and women have not believed in Jesus and have not welcomed him as their own Savior. Some of these souls have not believed because they have not yet heard about him or have not yet heard the truth about him and what he has done for each of them. But some souls have heard the truth about Jesus. They have heard the gospel and the good news about the heavenly Son of God come to save the world. And they have denied that message. They have refused to believe it. And they have rejected the eternal salvation the Heavenly Father has sent His Son to give them. But how can this be? What is the reason for this grave tragedy? For the rejection of the Son and the refusal of eternal salvation? Why do some deny him, but others believe in Jesus and welcome him into their lives? This is the verdict, the Gospel of John declares. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Wrongful deeds and a love for darkness. That is the reason some souls refuse the light, Christ Jesus. Instead of him, they choose the darkness of denial, doubt, and misbelief. Instead of Jesus and his way of life, they prefer to keep doing their own wrongful deeds. Sadly, they will not believe. Even though we all have good reason for believing. Even though many of us have already believed. Some souls just will not believe. The heavenly light himself has explained this for us. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Dark and wrongful deeds prefer the darkness, and the souls who want to keep on doing wrong like to keep themselves to the darkness. But Jesus, he is the light, the truth, and the way of right doing and living. So dark and wrongdoing souls avoid the light of Christ and keep themselves from him because they do not want him to expose their misdeeds. 
But whoever lives by the truth, Jesus says, comes into the light. A man or woman who lives by the truth is someone who loves truth and who is willing to live by the truth day by day and hour by hour. He or she is prepared to come into the light of Christ Jesus and to live by the gospel truth about him. So that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. John 3.21 says finally, because a truth-loving woman or a man coming to the light Christ Jesus reveals and confirms that the gospel is true and the work of God Almighty himself. So what about you? Are you a truth-loving soul? Have you come to the light Christ Jesus? Have you recognized the truthfulness of the gospel? Do you believe in Christ and live by the truth about him? John Joseph is the pastor of a Baptist church in Maryland, USA. He is a former U.S. Coast Guard officer. And John Joseph became a Christian because of a sermon from John 3, 16. Joseph loved sports and after high school received a scholarship to play baseball at Virginia Commonwealth University. After college, John did not fare so well. He fell into a life of partying, alcoholism, cocaine addiction, and finally, crime. After a 2000 confrontation with law officers, Joseph decided to make a drastic change, and he enlisted in the United States Coast Guard. But even after completing his training, learning the discipline of the service, and receiving a placement in Oregon, John fell back into his old ways of drinking and drug taking. But happily, he also met a fellow Coast Guard and young skater kid named Art Thompson. Art loved Jesus. And Art shared the gospel with his friend, John Joseph. Jesus loves you, bro, Art told John, and regularly invited him for dinner with his wife and daughters. Later, in 2008, Joseph was restationed to the East Coast in Baltimore. In the new place, without any friends, he spent much of his time drinking and gambling online. But he also began watching videos about religion and exploring the reasons for Christian faith. Then the bottom fell out, John Joseph recalls. At a 2009 New Year's Eve celebration, he drank so much he blacked out. His friends became worried about him. So he went home and began listening to sermons by well-known preacher John Piper. Then he listened to Piper's sermon from John 3.16 about faith and salvation and about sin and judgment. And then it happened for John Joseph. He became a Christian. He was born again and felt the change within him. In his own words, the burden of my sin fell off in an instant, replaced with the knowledge 
that Jesus was Lord and God had saved me. What about you? Have you had your John 3.16 turnabout? Have you felt the love of God reaching down into your heart? Have you believed in his one and only Son and the Savior, Christ Jesus? Have you found the new way of living and the new life that will last for eternity? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these words of Scripture. And I thank you for this promise about salvation through our Savior and your Son, Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you for this wonderful assurance that by believing in Christ Jesus, we can have eternal life. Father, I pray for all those who watch uh, this video, that they will say yes to this promise. They will say yes to your Son, Christ Jesus. They will say yes to you, Father God, and your offer of eternal life. I pray that they will believe this day in Christ Jesus and they will step into the light. And Father God, I thank you also for the assurance that this passage offers us that you love the world. And Father, because of your love for the world, I pray for the healing of our world. I pray for the healing of the nations. I thank you for the vaccines that have arrived in the world, and I thank you for the uh, treatment and uh, cure that uh, they are offering now to those who have received them. And Father, I thank you for the vaccine that has come to our own nation of Canada, and has come to our own uh, community of Jasper, I thank you for the vaccine that has arrived at uh, uh, Alpine Summit Seniors Residence. And I thank you for the healing and the health and the wellness of the residents of our Seniors Lodge. I thank you for this uh, grace and mercy that you have uh, shown them. And Father, I pray that uh, the uh, vaccine will uh, soon arrive for the rest of us, Father God in our community, throughout our province, and uh, throughout our country, and throughout the nations. Father, may it uh, be effective in treating us and in cure and curing us of uh, the COVID-19 virus. Father, I pray in your grace and mercy that you will do this for us. And because of your assurance that you love this world, and because we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my 
soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am With many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am. Sight rich as healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God.